Hi, I'm Howell Morgan, uh, here at the Fly Fair, British Fly Fair in Stoke on Trent, where I'm doing fly casting demonstrations, showing people how easy it is, uh, making it entertaining, trying to get people into the sport, um, which I started many, many years ago. Started off when I was two and a half, three years of age, fishing on the River Tyvee. Uh, since then, fished all over the world and trying to share my passion with everybody in the show and just showing them how to do it, how simple it is, and get more people into this sport. Now then imagine that rod up in the air there, my hand is down there. The problem is, your hands are very far away from each other. And this one down here feels a little bit lonely. And when you're coming forward, it comes up to meet the other one. Now watch what happens, you've lost the bend in the spring. Then, okay, let it go. You then suddenly catch up with the weight of the line, but the rod is already here. You load the log there, it crashes down on the water in front of you, or it wraps around the tip, right? So when you pull down, that hand must stay down there, push forward, let go. Now, there is one other mistake I see people doing. They pull down with their left hand, they stay down with their left hand, but just at the last part of the cast, they're scared that the line won't run up this ring and they try to help it. What you see them doing is this. They pull down, they stay down, they come forward, they go, oh, please go on, and they push it up there, right? Don't do it. Anybody that knows me, the history, my father was a very, very keen fly fisherman, known all over the world as an author and angling writer, so when other kids were given rattles, I was given a fly reel. Um, started off in the River Tyvee at about three, four years of age, fly fishing from wild brown trout and just stayed in it all my life really uh, with my dad and then carried it on a little bit further. When I was 13, 14, got into competition casting by accident. I entered a competition uh, which cost me 50 pence and won a 15 pound tackle voucher. Since then it made a lot of financial sense so for three years I kept competing at the CLA Game Fair. Um, after that, at the age of 17, they banned me from that show and I went on to tournament casting where I've been fortunate enough to be world fly casting champion and then after that I went into the fly fishing scene where I've competed in world championships in Australia, America, basically all over the world and again I've been fortunate there I won a silver medal and also been in two silver medal team winning things for Wales. Right, the rod I've chosen is a Sierra HM3. It's a 10 foot class 4.5, which is an ideal one for fishing on the river. Um, fish all my check nymphs uh, and my bugs when I'm fishing for grayling. So it's very, very light, very responsive, fast action. So it enables you to fish all day without getting tired and also enables you to cast the bugs very, very softly and gently onto the water without actually losing a fish. And what I've done with the reel, this is a new reel with a rim drag, so the whole side of it actually is the drag system, so it's very, very easy. If you've got a fish playing hard, you can just crank up the drag, very, very simple, and then if you just want to release it, then just rotate that, which will allow the fish to take more line off. The holy grail, right? The double haul, right? Now then, let's do it slowly. As you did before, as the rod goes up, left hand pulls down. But instead of the left hand staying there, rod going up there, what happens is this, the left hand must go up to meet the rod before the rods move forward. They both start forward together, then you pull again. So it's pull on the back cast, go up to meet it, both hands meet up there, start coming forward, then you pull again. Now there is a problem with this. This thing is doing one thing, right? That thing's doing two things. It's called brain scramble, right? This thing there, pure, can't handle that doing two things and what doing one thing. And what happens is because this is doing two things, that one's only doing one thing, this one feels a little bit left out. And it tries to do two things as well. This is what happens. You start off with the best intentions in the world. You pull on the back cast, you go up to meet it, you pull on the forward cast. But then, because the right hand is only doing one thing, the right hand starts to speed up. And then it's spaghetti around your head. So let's do it at the right speed. Pull, go up, pull. Pull, up. Pull. When you're happy with it, just pull and let go. Now, when you're putting the line up the rings, you've got a very, very simple way to do it is to fold the line in half and then feed it up through the rings. What that does when you go up, if you lose the line in your hand, when you let it go, the loop will actually stop the line running down the rings, which will prevent you having to re-line the rod all the way through again. So it's just fold it in half through each ring 
like that, and all the way up through to the top. And then once you get it to the tip, be very, very careful to pull it out to the tip like this, rather than pulling it against the tip. If you pulled it like that, you could have a, a nasty accident and break the tip off the rod. And once you've got it as much out as you want, then you can take the line down and then attach the leader to the line. Right, at the end of the line now, we can have put a braided loop on, but as we haven't got it now, what we can do is take a tapered leader, which has a thick butt end, and then transfers down to a thin at the front, which transfers the power from this thick piece of line down gradually to your fly, which will enable you to turn over flies very, very delicate, especially when you're fishing on the river for grayling and trout. Now what we do is make sure that you pull all the coils off so you don't get any knots in the tapered leader. Pull it all loose, then take the butt end onto the, onto the line, then you rotate that around six times and take it back on itself again once you've gone all the way down there, tuck it back in the top end, pull tight, just at the end of the line, which will enable you to get that tapered leader on the cast, on the line there. Then that will transfer the power gradually from the thick butt end right down to where you attach your fly at the end of the tapered leader. One thing, right? In fly fishing, especially on small still waters, not so much on the large reservoirs because you're not so close to each other. But there's this thing coming to fly cast, fly fishing, fly casting, it's this macho thing. You know? It's the guy that looks at everybody else and puffs his chest out. I'm the best caster around. <coughs> That's never the person that catches most fish though. The person that catches most fish is the one that always concentrates on presentation. Gets his fly turning over nicely every time. You can compare fly fishing to golf, I suppose. Um, the, one, the one pun is once you're hooked, you're hooked into fly fishing. Um, the one thing is it can be like golf, the most frustrating thing you'll ever do, but it takes you away from the stresses and strains of everyday life. It gets you into the fresh air, you enjoy the beautiful scenery and hopefully catch a fish for your supper.